Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, viewers, and welcome to The Will of the People on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Martha Randolph, and I am your host. Our topic today will be the recent passage of Senate Bill 3095. It is a historic bill which is supporting the fight against the abusive use of toxic chemicals by agribusinesses in Hawaii. Uh, my guest today is Gary Hooser, who I love to call a political progressive, who has represented the state of Hawaii, as to the, represented Kauai and Nihau in the state Senate, and he was the director for environmental quality control for the state of Hawaii during the Abercrombie administration. He is currently president of the board of directors for the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action, and he's also executive director for Pono Hawaii Initiative, PHI, was recently elected as the vice chair of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. And uh, he and Hapa were very instrumental in getting SB 3095 passed and signed into law. So welcome, Gary, and thank you so much for appearing on this show. Thank you, Martha. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, I am going to just turn right over to you and say, can you tell us a little bit about what SB 3095 actually is and why its passage has been so important for Hawaii and as uh, something that may help other states in our country? Why is it necessary to support these regulations, which supposedly are passed down by the federal government? Well, thank you for asking. You know, SB 3095 was a uh, first in the nation, first in Hawaii. No, first mm -hmm. of all, uh, Hawaii has never passed anything meaningful regulating uh, restricted use pesticides or mm -hmm. the agrochemical companies. Uh, this started for me and for a lot of other people about five years ago. Uh, on, on Kauai, we did, we did a bill called Bill 2491, a similar type of measure requiring disclosure and buffer zones, and uh, we won. We fought against the five of the largest chemical companies Disclosure in the world. Disclosure and buffer zones for what particular? For restricted use pesticides and the growing of genetically modified organisms. Mm. Uh, we fought against uh, Syngenta, Dow Chemical, DuPont, BASF. Uh, Monsanto was not on Kauai at the time. Mm. It was a, a long, hard-fought battle. Uh, there were more people that showed up at those meetings than any time in history for Kauai, and we won. Uh, but then they took us to court, and they won. Uh, and so the court said the state has to be the one to regulate our pesticides. So we then moved that battle to the state legislature. Okay. And, and people from all over, from Maui, from Hawaii County, from here, lots of organizations, the Center for Food Safety, Hawaii Seed, uh, the Sierra Club, lots of organizations lined up the Hawaii teachers uh, to say that the state of Hawaii needs to protect the health and environment of its community. First of all, the children, because uh, chlorpyrifos is, is a chemical that was banned. It's a four-year phase in ban is proven to damage the brains of developing children and in the fetus. And this evidence, the evidence for that, has been with the federal government for some time, I believe, long before the protests for use on this island existed. Isn't that correct? It's absolutely correct. This chemical was banned for the use inside homes for residential use a number of years ago. It was proven. They knew then that it harms the brains of children. Uh, but the, the chemical industry and big business and big government push back against banning it uh, for outdoor use. Hawaii was the first in the nation. It's, it's a phased-in ban, uh, but it's the first state in the nation to do this. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, just a couple of weeks ago, a uh, U.S. federal court ruled that the EPA now must ban it statewide. Uh, the Trump administration's new director has been fighting that. Uh, Absolutely. But the court, Absolutely. Just, the court just directed them, they have 60 days to ban it state, uh, nationwide. Nationwide. Yeah. Okay. And I think uh, if you can please explain to our viewers what you mean when you say phased in, because if you read the actual law, it does give uh, corporations the option of requesting from the federal government permission to continue using this dangerous chemical until. 2022. Now, are they, if they do, are they still required to limit where they use it in terms of the distance from schools and other such things and, and not using it as a spray? The, the bill had about five major components. Mm. The four-year ban of chlorpyrifos was one of the most important ones. And that means after four years, you can't use it in the state of Hawaii at all. Mm. But uh, initially, farmers are, or people that are using it now can't continue using it. They have to apply for a special permit. 
and that permits public information, and they cannot use it within, it's only 100 feet of schools uh, during school hours, mm. or, yes. Yeah. Uh, and there's also full disclosure of all restricted use pesticide use, not just this one chemical, but all. There is probably 90 different restricted use pesticides used right. in the state of Hawaii. And for the first time, every user will have to publicly disclose their use, how much okay. they use, what they use, and where they use it. Okay. And do you, as an organization or an individual, do you, do you approach these companies or their boards of directors and try to speak to them person to person? as an individual, basically saying, you know what this does, and you are using it anyway, recognizing that you have concerns and profits and this is what your purpose is. Do you feel okay about this? Do you fear any kind of uh, comeback at you when the general public discovers what you've been doing? Why would you continue to do this? I know this may sound terribly naive, <clears throat> but I feel it necessary to ask the question because Presumably, the people who run these organizations are people, and they have children, and they should certainly, they don't have their own children living in these areas, so you do know, you it, guys try that? Do you get the chance? It's, it's interesting that you ask that question. Uh, uh, yes, we try it. Yes, I personally tried it. Uh, that most people, they think, well, let's just get everybody at the table, and we can work this out, and, and I did try that. Uh, unfortunately, the, the people that manage these businesses mm. are not the ones making the decisions. The decisions are made in Chicago or in Zurich or in some other place in the world. Right. And uh, when I tried, the first thing I did when I started down this path five years ago, I met with the, the heads of the local heads of these companies and uh, asked them for the basic information. Just tell me what you're doing so I can make my, my decisions. Mm -hmm. And they refused to do that. And then they proceed to lie and mislead and, and not tell you things. Uh, so it was a very frustrating experience uh, trying to work with them. And then you realize, at some point I realized that these are people, but the corporations aren't people. The corporations are driven by profits and profits alone. Mm. And they believe uh, that is, is most important. But they'll lie, they'll say things like, we need this to feed the world. They will say that. We've got mm -hmm. to grow all these crops and use all these chemicals and do all this GMO to feed the world. And then you say, well, wait a second, what are you growing? And, and the truth is they're growing corn for ethanol or yeah. for cattle feed or for high fructose corn syrup. And you don't feed the world with sugar no. and meat and ethanol. Uh, very little of what they do. They, they do. They're designing crops that withstand pesticides and then they're selling these people more pesticides. So it's right. a profit motive. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're dealing with corporations who are thugs and criminals on an international scale. Uh, they are doing major harm to the environment and the health of people in countries all over the world. And they justify it on the basis of their profits and their right to pursue what I have to refer to as the capitalist agenda. Uh, I actually went to Basel, Switzerland, mm. which is a corporate headquarters of Syngenta, mm -hmm. which is now Kim China. They're based in Basel, Switzerland. And I spoke to the board of directors, 900 members of the board. Mm. I was invited to speak from an activist group uh, who got me on the agenda. And I, I spoke to the members and I asked them, I said, don't do in my community what you're not allowed by law to do in your own town. Exactly. You know, they're not allowed to use atrazine or chlorpyrifos in Switzerland. They can't even grow GMO crops in Switzerland. Mm. But yet the companies in my town and in your town and in our community are doing this very same thing. Exactly. Uh, I think this is ironic because as you probably remember, those of us of a certain age do, when DDT was banned in the United States, the companies that made it and used it went to third world countries, India appears to mind immediately, and freely and happily used these substances which were banned in America, and they were allowed to get away with it, and the people living in those countries had no recourse to legal action, and in many cases when they tried to sue, um, even if they won their case, it did not apply to the corporation which was based in the United States. So in a way, this is karma. This is turnabout, is fair play. The problem is it's our people being mm -hmm. affected, and uh, which shows you why you have to be a conscious and, voter. And they treat the state of Hawaii yeah. the same way they treated those other countries in the past. They come in and they employ people, yeah. and then en enroll those people to be on their team because they want to keep their jobs. 
and then they spread money around the community. They, they fund football teams and baseball teams and the mm. Chamber of Commerce and all these organizations. They, they put a lot of money in the community, so it keeps the community quiet. People don't want to complain, they don't want to rock the boat because of, of the money that these companies are bringing in, but, but we're winning. You know, Senate Bill 3095, the first in the nation, other states are going to follow our lead. Mm. There was a major court case uh, last week that uh, Monsanto uh, was fined $289 million wow. uh, for glyphosate and causing this man's cancer. And there's 8,000 people lined up behind him. Right. They're going to appeal it. It's going to take years. Of course. Uh, but that judge raked Monsanto over the coals for withholding information, for providing false information. Yeah. They do what they call... Uh, Research shopping. Yes, they'll do research and it won't tell them what they want to hear. So then they'll keep they'll keep looking for studies until they find some studies that support what they're doing. Right, and they don't tell the public about those other studies. No, of course not. The other thing is, um, I wanted to start on a topic. You mentioned some of the early efforts you had on uh, on the island of Kauai. I remember that incident, by the way, uh, but in the process of getting this bill through the legislature. You must have faced some interesting objections, because unfortunately, many of our representatives have dual agendas, many of which are related to the funding they get from these organizations. So how long did it actually take from the time of being told by the courts that you have to present it to the state and go through the state, to actually getting this through the legislature and on the desk of the governor, who I have to give him credit, signed it? and seems to be supporting these entire uh, actions. You know, it, it probably four years from yeah. the time the courts ruled until we pass this into law. And, and you know, it's good news and bad news. I'm, I'm thrilled and very happy that we passed it. But that's three years of more people being exposed and right. more, more health and environmental harms that were caused that didn't need to be caused. And what were the barriers that presented? Were there individuals who actually put a block on it, or yeah. did they keep throwing it back to the courts or asking for more information? What seemed to be the biggest you know, problem? I, I spent eight years in the Hawaii State Senate mm. representing Kauai Nihau and majority leader for four of those years, so I understand how things work. And a system set up where certain committee chairs, certain individuals have inordinate power. Mm. And what happened is our bill got blocked over and over again in the Senate and then got blocked in the House. It never got anywhere. And, and you know, the name of the show is the will of the people. Is that, is yes. that what you call it? Okay. That's why we passed this into law. It, was, it passed unanimous at the end of the day, unanimous in the House and the Senate because people showed up. People showed up and knocked on doors. People called. People sent emails. We overwhelmed that building and those legislators with testimony, science-based testimony, real reality-based from children, from teachers, and it was just this relentless, and, and I have to tell people, remind people, mm. as you know, their word helps and it matters. When they fill out that testimony, I'd get calls from people saying, you want me to do this again? You know, mm. they've been doing it for three or four years, and I'd say, yes, yes, please. Do it again. And they did it again, and we won, and, and I played a, a a role and Hoppe did, but it really was thousands of people. I, I had legislators tell me, stop already. They come in and their voicemail's full. They have too many emails. Uh, and the Hawaii State Teachers Association, the nurses came in to support us. We had the pediatricians, American Academy of Pediatrics, stepping up to the plate. Right. And, and it was, uh, but there was roadblock after roadblock. Uh, after we won, mm -hmm. the industry put up two of their a lobbyist and an employee to run for state senate in the same house uh, this past election. They both mm -hmm. lost in the primary, but that was their reaction. Uh, okay. An employee well. of Dow Chemical on Kauai ran against a state house member who was supporting our bill, and another person ran for the senate, former lobbyist from Monsanto. Okay. So this is something very important to pay attention to. that. Um, these corporations do not give up no. when a law is passed against them. They will put through their candidate. And unfortunately, this sounds very similar to some of the stuff we've been seeing in the federal government, which is someone with a personal interest or a corporate interest basically takes their money and tries to put someone in a position to battle against and prevent any further laws being passed. So we are going to be moving to a little break in a short time. And then after that, Gary, I hope we can come back and talk a little more about HAPA and your other organizations, what they do, how you put them together, and how people can participate uh, more aggressively. By the way, thank you for your recommendations for the primary. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. And so this is Martha Randolph. The show is 
the will of the people, and we have been talking about the will of the people with SB 3095 to limit and control the spread of pesticide use by uh, GMOs and agribusiness in Hawaii. Thank you. Aloha, I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at three, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hi everyone, welcome back to The Will of the People. Today my guest is Gary Hauser and we're talking about Senate Bill 3095 which limits the use and control and regulates pesticide usage in the state of Hawaii by agribusiness and GMOs. Uh, but Gary has a wide ranging access and he has wonderful organizations which we'd like to talk more about. So Gary, can you tell me about HAPA, which is the Hawaiian Alliance for Progressive Action. How did it get formed? What are your agendas? And I believe you have a training program for first-time politicians or candidates. I'd like you to tell us all about it. Great. I'd be happy to. Yeah. HAPA, hapahai.org, if someone wants to find out more about us. Uh, the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action was formed about three years ago. And it, it came from conversations I have, you know, we have with people. You sit around, you talk about how are we going to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I realized, and, and the people I was talking with realized, there, there really isn't any uh, overarching or broad-based progressive groups. There are mostly in silos. There'll be uh, gay rights groups, there'll be environmental groups, there'll be labor groups, but there aren't any that really cover the spectrum of, from a pro progressive values point of view. So we thought that uh, we should start this, and it's a statewide organization. We have a broad base of uh, uh, board members on every island. Uh, people in the environmental community, in the Native Hawaiian community, in the environmental community. Um, and we uh, raise money and have, have programs that we do. And one of the main programs we do is a program called the Kuleana Academy. Kuleana Academy uh, identifies, uh, trains, and uh, new emerging leaders, uh, political leaders. And, and the reason this came about, it's an interesting story because it ties to the GMO pesticide mm. action. Yes. On Maui, on Maui, they put yeah, a ballot initiative to ban Monsanto, basically. It was a moratorium on Monsanto's growing right. GMO crops. But it, they put it on the ballot, and over half the people, over half the voters on Maui said, yes, we want to we want to do this. And then they, they lost in court also. Monsanto sued them. But it got me thinking, half the voters on Maui, half of those people want to support something that's pretty radical, that's pretty progressive, regulating Monsanto. How come yeah. they're not electing more progressive candidates? And we came to the conclusion was we didn't have good candidates. We had good people, but not good candidates. We had people with sometimes they're single issue, they have purple mohawks, they don't know how to run a campaign. So we started this campaign leadership training program. We've done three of them so far. This last election, uh, out of that training program, two people were elected to the state house. Two new house members, wow. solid progressives, came out of this program. That's fantastic. Uh, another two or three came very close. Uh, many are still in the, in, in, the, in the running now, yeah. and uh, they're all, I, I, I hate generalities, but they're all looking at 2020 also. The people that right. lost are saying, right. we're in this for the long term, and we feel really good about that. HAPA is a 501c3. We don't actually support the candidates. We train them. We're in education. So we teach them how to, how to run a campaign, how to raise money, how to do public speaking, uh, how to knock on doors and talk about issues, but then they, we send them off and they run their own campaigns, they choose to run well or, or not. Uh, that's what HAPA does. Mm -hmm. We also do other community work, but that's our main program right now. Okay, and is that uh, a program which is supported financially, or do they have to pay a fee to be a part of it, and are there any connections to that fee payment? They're, they each, it's a competitive process. So we take applications from around the state. People apply, they, give, they tell us why they should be accepted into the program, because mm. we limit it to 15 people. We usually have about 30 or 40 people that might apply. 
and if they're accepted, part of their agreement is to attend these classes mm -hmm. uh, and they're, they're five or six weekend retreats over three months. Okay. We actually fly everybody in and we all stay at the hotel and it's you really... You fly them, you yes, pay for that? Yes, okay. we pay for that, we pay for the trainers and, and we ask them to commit to raising $1,000. Uh, not just take out of their pocket, not to spend, not to mm -hmm. take, but to, but to use their fundraising skills because we teach them how to raise money. So teach them how to go ask 10 people for $100 or 20 people for 50 to help right. them pay for this program. The actual cost is closer to $6,000 per student mm -hmm. and that's raised out in a broader community. Right. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one of the main programs is the Kuleana Academy. We've done three cohorts. We have about 60 uh, graduates. Mm -hmm. This last election cycle, uh, about 17 of them ran for public office. Yeah, uh, I saw a large list yeah, of people. No, yeah. and, and they're, good, they're good, solid people. You know, they're not only just progressive, but they're bold. They've got their people of character. They're, they're articulate. They're thoughtful. They're a really solid group. And, and uh, Hawaii will be blessed by any of them getting elected, in my opinion. And two of them were successful. Okay. Now, I'm, I have a quandary here, which is part of me would like to discuss with you the significance of the recent primaries and the lack of participation by voters, which has been chronic here in Hawaii. And I'd like to talk as well about the reality of trying to run for office in this state when you are new, if you don't have massive funding, so you can put out massive commercials and such things. Um, but at the same time, I'd like to know about your other organization. So if you can briefly tell us about that, and then hopefully we have time to talk about the actual electioning process, because for years now, it has been clear that whether it's local office or national office, it is difficult to run and be successful without a whole bunch of money behind you, which is one of the things that we are discovering. Our democracy, or our so-called democracy, is being purchased right out of pocket by people with right. big bucks. And our focus is on local elections, council and state legislative offices. Yeah. The bar is a little bit lower in terms of money. Uh, if people are interested in our next Kuleana Academy program, they can go to our website and, and put their name on a list too. Mm. And we'll talk more about the, the realities of running and winning. But right. first, if, I'll talk about the Pono Hawaii Initiative. Okay. So the Pono Hawaii Initiative, I'm the executive director. I run the day-to-day -day business of that. That is a political organization in the sense that it actively lobbies for bills and it actively supports candidates. It's totally separate from HAPA. There's no, no uh, redundancy in the board or the staff or the budgets, that kind of thing. It's totally separate. And we've been trying to help candidates actually run. And by uh, uh, endorsing them, providing funds for mailers, that kind of thing to, to support their candidate. My philosophy on elections is that ultimately it belongs to the candidate. The candidate's responsible. Yeah. No, nobody can be blamed other than the candidate. And if a candidate is willing to knock on doors, and this is one of the lessons, recurring themes uh, for the Kuleana Academy. We have governors, former governors, senator, we have all these people come in and talk, state house members to the, to the class. And the question is, what does it take to win? And universally, it's about knocking on doors. It's about hard work. And mm. it's, it's, not, it's not so much about money. You have to have some money on the local level, uh, but it's really about working. And if you have less money, you have to work harder. You have mm -hmm. to have roots in the community. You can't just parachute into a community right. and live there for a year and expect people to embrace you. So the ideal candidate is somebody with roots. Ideally, they've been to school there, but at least they've been involved in various organizations. They've some track record of leadership, right. and they're willing to knock on those doors and raise the money. The two that were elected yeah. uh, to the state house from our, from our academy, uh, it was the first time for both of them. First time okay. for both of them. That's fantastic. Now, so just let me to repeat. Basically, the Pono Action, uh, the Pono, Pono Hawaii, Initiative. Uh, Hawaii Initiative, I'm sorry, That's all these fine. letters. You, that is a lobbying group. That is a group that puts forward political actions, and it is separate. It is not a um, nonprofit organization. Right. It is separate from HAPA, which is more of an educational exactly. situation. Absolutely. But HAPA was very much more in, uh, involved in the passage of SB yes. 3095, yes. which five, any action by the other group would have been separate. Yeah? Absolutely. The 501c3s are allowed a certain percentage of their budget to be used for lobbying. Okay. HAPA is a 501c3. Donations to HAPA are tax deductible. Okay. We, we, for sure, you cannot support actively support candidates. Right. But you can do a little bit of lobbying. Pono Hawaii Initiative can do 51% lobbying, 
and 49% candidates, so it's more purely political and the contributions are not tax deductible. Okay, so just to uh, review, is there more go that is going to be done uh, similar to 3095 that will continue to advance and make more aggressive the limitations on what these huge agribusinesses are doing, since, as you say, they are corporation mentality. Now, the fact that the Supreme Court has indicated that a corporation is an individual, which is very disturbing to me, um, means that they have rights which, before that decision was made, they did not have. So how are you going to battle, or how many other battles are out there maybe right now that the public should know about? We are—when I say we, it's a collective we. It's HAPA, Pono Hawaii Initiative to a certain extent, and other organizations, so it's not just me. I want to be clear on that. Right. Uh, we're looking at an agenda, 2019 agenda, mm. uh, that's going to encompass raising our minimum wage to at least $15 an hour, uh, publicly funded elections, uh, the legalization of cannabis, recreational use by responsible adults, and bail reform. Okay. Th those are my personal priorities, and I believe they're going to emerge among a broader group as being priorities. We're going to fight for those really hard. And with the pesticides and the GMOs, we're going to go to the Department of Education. Okay. We're going to go to the Department of Education and say, you know, there's a plenty of evidence. You don't need more science right. on glyphosate and these chemicals to say they shouldn't be used on school grounds. That's so true. they could do that without a law. The DOE, and I don't think they should be used on school grounds whether the kids are in the school right. or not, because clearly it's, it's just as if, what, if they're not in school, they're not going to catch it the next day when it's on the ground? So I think that little thing that you added yeah. is something that has to be looked at. Because it doesn't have to be a law. We don't need five years to pass a law. No. The Department of Education, the Board of Education the Department could say, you know, there's plenty of evidence. We're going to at least temporarily, for a year or two, till we figure this out, stop using herbicides and insecticides, pesticides on school grounds. Uh, so that's what we're hopeful that the administration of the schools will, will recognize the value of this and voluntarily do it. Okay. Uh, and we're confident that parents and teachers are going to line up behind us and demand this as well. That's fantastic. So we are getting ready to uh, wind up, so we will have to get to other subjects on another day. This is Martha Randolph. The program has been the will of the people. And we have talked with Gary Hauser about the passage of SB 3095, which is the first in this state that is putting limitations on the use of pesticides by GMOs and agribusiness. And I have so many more questions. So, Gary, I hope you will join me again and we will pick this up. I'd be happy and to. Run with it, especially before the elections, if I can manage it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please come and join me again in two weeks when we will be speaking with a surprise guest. I will let you know as soon as I've got it confirmed. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.